A few months ago, I became obsessed with the show Daisy Jones and the Six. The songs, the clothes, the hatties. I didn't necessarily love the show, but it was about a period in music history that I think is really cool. The 1970s. Novelist Taylor Jenkins Reid said the fictional band Daisy Jones and the Six was inspired by the real band Fleetwood Mac. I had always heard rumors and whispers about the Fleetwood Mac drama, and I assumed I knew the whole story when I really didn't, which is totally understandable because the story of Fleetwood Mac has over 50 years of drama. The band dynamics in Daisy Jones and the Six made me want to investigate the real life dynamics in the band Fleetwood Mac. As per usual, I offer this disclaimer, I'm not the authority on either the band or the show, I'm just a fan, but I learned a lot from my research and I wanted to share a little bit of what I learned. This is Fleetwood Mac versus Daisy Jones and the Six. Fleetwood Mac. There have been 18 members of Fleetwood Mac over the years, but the ones in all the pictures from the 1970s are Mick Fleetwood, John McVie, Christine McVie, Stevie Nicks, and Lindsey Buckingham. First things first, Lindsey Buckingham is a man, Stevie Nicks is a woman, Mick Fleetwood is the drummer. This confuses people because the band is called Fleetwood Mac, so sometimes they think he is the singer. But the male voice you hear on most of the tracks is Lindsay Buckingham's voice. John and Christine McVie were married but divorced in 1976. They are not brother and sister. Mick Fleetwood started the band in London in 1967. After achieving moderate success in the UK, Fleetwood Mac blew up in 1977 with the worldwide success of their album Rumors. The making of Rumors was notoriously dramatic and served as the inspiration for the novel and show Daisy Jones and the Six. Let's start with the basics. Album versus album, Aurora versus Rumors. Aurora took some getting used to, but I think the album is actually really good. Phoebe Bridgers, Jackson Brown, and Marcus Mumford helped produce the album. I think most of the cast actually sings and plays the instruments on the recordings. It feels like a real album by a real band, not like a gimmicky TV show soundtrack. My favorite songs are The River and Let Me Down Easy. Sometimes when people talk about rumors, they'll say every song was a hit, and that is basically true. The track list for the original 1977 album has massive hits like Dreams, Don't Stop, The Chain, as well as legacy love songs like Songbird and You Make Love and Fun. The album was remastered and reissued in 2004 to include acoustic demos and bonus tracks recorded during the 1976 sessions. Both Rumors and Aurora are pop rock folk albums inspired by the California Sound. The California Sound is a sound established by bands like the Beach Boys, the Birds, and the Eagles, and that is carried on by modern bands like Beach House and, I would argue, Harry Styles. Hallmarks of the California Sound are vocal harmonies, clean guitars, tambourines, and generally that peaceful, easy feeling. Both Rumors and Aurora were recorded in California. Rumors was recorded at the record plant in Sausalito, a suburb of San Francisco, and Aurora was recorded at Sound City in Los Angeles. Both Aurora and Rumors feature both male and female vocalists. On Rumors, Stevie Nicks, Christine McVie, and Lindsay Buckingham sing the songs. On Aurora, Riley Kyo and Sam Claflin sing. Aurora features more duets, while most of the songs on Rumors have a single lead singer and other singers providing backing harmonies and vocals. Having multiple vocalists in any case feels refreshing and dynamic, and I really enjoyed both albums. In the show, Aurora is Daisy Jones and the Six's debut album, although the band The Dunn Brothers released two albums prior. In real life, Rumors was Fleetwood Mac's 11th studio album. Both projects represent the vibe of an established band performing with new members. In the show, that would be Daisy. On Rumors, the new members would be Stevie Nicks and Lindsay Buckingham. I thought Aurora was a great homage to Rumors. It's very good. Maybe not Rumors great, but maybe that's just because it's missing all the drama behind the scenes. Now that that's out of the way, let's dig into the dirt. With her flowy outfits, long hair, and ethereal vibes, Daisy Jones is a pretty clear stand-in for Stevie Nicks, one of Fleetwood Mac's lead female vocalists. Here are some other things that Stevie and Daisy have in common. 
They both changed their first names. Daisy's real name is Margaret, and Stevie's real name is Stephanie. Both Stevie and Daisy are California girls. Daisy grew up in Beverly Hills, and Stevie attended high school in Northern California. Both Daisy and Stevie have stage fright. In the show, Daisy must overcome her fear of performing to become the lead singer of a rock band. She does this with the help of a little white powder. You'd never believe it today, but Stevie Nicks also gets stage fright. She said in 2021, I get very bad stage fright. I get terrible butterflies and it's not pleasant. It has always happened to me, she told VH1. Once I walk on stage, it's fine, all the nerves go away, but the six hours leading up to the show are very hard for me. Joe Taysom wrote about drug use among the band for a 2021 piece in the British magazine Far Out. He writes, it soon became a pre-show ritual of sorts for the group to join in a ceremonial bump of cocaine immediately before going on stage, an introduction which quickly becomes much more and saw Nix enter into the inescapable trap of addiction. Nix has often struggled with stage fright and there's a fair theory that suggests that her only relief from the issue was a bump before going on. Daisy Jones demonstrates this behavior in the show. We see her taking many bumps of cocaine before stepping on stage. Of course, Stevie and Daisy also have their wardrobes in common. Costume designer Denise Wingate and star Riley Keough used a number of Stevie grabs for Daisy's wardrobe. The most notable is the metallic cape Daisy wears in the final episode. Suki Waterhouse plays keyboardist Karen Serko, a stand-in for Christine McVie, Fleetwood Mac's keyboardist, vocalist, and songwriter. As you might have guessed, Christine McVie and John McVie were married. Christine actually joined the band in 1970 because they were married, but being in the same band as her husband quickly proved to be too much of a good thing. McVie told Rolling Stone in 1977, we were very happy, very happy for probably three years, and then the strain of me being the same band as him started to take its toll. When you're in the same band as somebody, you're seeing them almost more than 24 hours a day. You start to see an awful lot of the bad side, because touring is no easy thing. There's a lot of drinking. John is not the most pleasant of people when he's drunk, very belligerent, as seeing more Hyde than Jekyll. Christine and John broke up in 1976 after eight years of marriage. In Daisy Jones and the Six, Karen and Daisy are supportive friends. In real life, Stevie and Christine were supportive friends too. Despite all the drama with the boys in the band, the leading ladies always had each other's backs. No cat fighting here. Christine McVie did die in 2022. Rest in peace, Christine. The show's central love triangle is between Daisy, Billy, and Billy's wife, Camilla. In the show, Billy meets Daisy after he's already started a family with Camilla. Daisy meets Billy and she throws him way off his groove. Because Daisy and Billy are both vocalists in the band, it's easy to draw parallels between their relationship and the relationship between Stevie Nicks and Lindsay Buckingham, two of the lead singers in Fleetwood Mac. Both pairs have outstanding stage chemistry and their passionate outbursts make for some dramatic tabloid highs. The details of the relationship between Daisy and Billy actually has more in common with the relationship between Stevie Nicks and Mick Fleetwood, but that love-hate dynamic between Daisy and Billy is a lot more fun to explore. In the show, Daisy joins Billy's band, the Dunn Brothers, because their producer puts them together. This is more like how things usually work in the music industry, but less like how Stevie Nicks got into Fleetwood Mac. In real life, Lindsay Buckingham and Stevie Nicks were high school pals. They performed in a band and then as a duo called Buckingham Nicks. In 1974, Mick Fleetwood invited Lindsay Buckingham to join Fleetwood Mac as a singer and guitarist. Lindsay said that he would join, but only if Stevie could come too. Touring, drugs, affairs, the media, and success were all part of the cauldron of discontent that destroyed Nix and Buckingham's romance. Christine McVie says, During the making of rumors, Stevie and Lindsay were fighting all the time. Very volatile. The relationship is still an ongoing battle. Stevie Nix and Lindsay Buckingham's messy relationship led to some serious sexual tension, which you can hear in songs like The Chain, You Can Go Your Own Way, and Silver Springs. But even though Stevie and Lindsay hated each other's guts, they put aside their differences for the band. The couple managed to have a really long and lucrative career despite their personal differences. In the show, Daisy and Billy get together after Camilla dies. Lindsay and Stevie are still feuding to this day. 
The story between Daisy and Billy is more like the love affair between Stevie Nicks and Mick Fleetwood. Mick was the one who was married with kids, and it was his band that Stevie Nicks joined. According to Far Out magazine, Mick and Stevie began their affair in 1977 during the Australian dates of their Rumors tour. At this point, Fleetwood was married to Jetty Boyd. Fleetwood and Boyd were married for seven years before he cheated on her with Nicks although Boyd had previously had an affair with band member Bob Weston. Meanwhile, Nix was in a relationship with the Eagles' Don Henley. In his book, Play On, Mick Fleetwood wrote, Eventually, I fell in love with Nix, and it was chaotic. It was on the road, and it was a crazy love affair that went on longer than any of us really remember, probably several years by the end of it. Nix called the affair doomed, saying it was a doomed thing that caused pain for everybody. Stevie Nicks penned several songs about Fleetwood, with multiple appearing on the band's 1979 album, Tusk. On Storms, Nicks admits that her affair with Vic Fleetwood was not the best of ideas. In the liner notes of Tusk, Nicks wrote, Here's that song in a nutshell. Don't break up other people's marriages. It will never work and will haunt you for the rest of your miserable days. Damn. In the show, drugs play a role in bringing Daisy and Billy together. Billy saves Daisy after she overdoses, and he only wants to be with Daisy after he starts drinking again. In reality, drugs drove the members of Fleetwood Mac apart. Every member of Fleetwood Mac has admitted substance abuse at one point or another. Stevie loved cocaine. Lindsay loved marijuana. Christine loved champagne and also coke. In 2021, Nick said, all of us were drug addicts, but there was a point where I was the worst drug addict. I was a girl, I was fragile, and I was doing a lot of coke, and I had that hole in my nose, so it was dangerous. You would get, you would just get high on the air, Christine McPhee recalls. Those guys would blow it in your face, and you'd go, wow, that's strong. There's a reason they call it sex, drugs, and rock and roll, baby. Drugs are bad, but sometimes when you're a rock star, they're very difficult to avoid. It's pretty cool, albeit very boring, that Billy is sober for most of Daisy Jones and the Six. Fleetwood Mac has one of the longest careers in music history, over 50 years of albums, tours, and tantrums. This is the main difference and my main problem with using Daisy Jones as a comp for Fleetwood Mac. Although rumors effectively destroyed several in-band relationships, the band kept going. It wasn't until after 1987's Tango in the Night that Fleetwood Mac really took a proper break. They're still together to this day. In Daisy Jones and the Six, Daisy quits the band and it's over for everyone. Forever. Stevie Nicks actually didn't break up the band when she started a solo career. She released her iconic solo album Belladonna in 1981 and Mirage with Fleetwood Mac in 1982. Daisy Jones and the Six argues that family is more valuable than success or musical legacy, but the story of Fleetwood Mac gets it the other way around. Fleetwood Mac created a musical legacy that's lasted for generations. Would they have that legacy if they'd only dropped one album? Hard to say, but rumors were so tremendous that they just might have. The show got lots of little details right, and that adds to the authenticity of the story. But ultimately, Daisy Jones and the Six is telling its own story with its own themes and not the story of Fleetwood Mac. What do you think? Are there any other similarities or differences you notice between Daisy Jones and the Six and Fleetwood Mac? Any viewers remember Fleetwood Mac's heyday? I don't. Like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Let us know. Thanks again so much for watching. Please do like and subscribe and drop in. Share this video if you think someone else might find it interesting. Really helps support the channel and keeps me going. Cheers, everybody. Rock on.